Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And now, chapter 13. Ajamil begins his degraded life. From Canto 6, chapter 1, texts 63 through 68 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Yamadudas continued. In the same way that the sun and moon are eclipsed by a low planet, the Brahman Ajamil lost all his good sense. Thus he always thought of the prostitute, and within a short time he took her as a servant in his house and abandoned all the regulative principles of a Brahmin. Ajamil began spending whatever money he had inherited from his father to satisfy the prostitute with various material presentations so that she would remain pleased with him. He gave up all his Brahminical activities to satisfy her. Because his intelligence was pierced by her lustful glance, Ajamil engaged in sinful acts in her association. He even gave up the company of his extremely beautiful young wife, who came from a respectable Brahmin family. This rascal Ajamil, although born of a Brahmin family, lost his intelligence because of the prostitute's association, and thus he earned money somehow or other, regardless of whether properly or improperly, and used it to maintain her and her children. In this way he spent his long lifetime transgressing all the rules and regulations of the Holy Scripture, living extravagantly and eating food prepared by a prostitute. Therefore he is full of sins, he is unclean and is addicted to forbidden activities. Ajamil did not undergo atonement. Therefore, because of his sinful life, we must take him into the presence of Yamaraj for punishment. There, according to the extent of his sinful acts, he will be punished and thus purified. Purport as mentioned before, Ajamil was trained as a proper Brahmin from birth, and thus he was properly situated in service to his spiritual master, elders like his father, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But due to his association with a prostitute, he gave up his Brahminical engagements and became a servant of Lord Krishna's illusory energy, Maya. There are two kinds of servants. Maya servants and Krishna servants. Every living entity is originally a servant of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya himself affirms this. Jivera Svarupa Haya Krishnera Nitya Das, which means, quote, The constitutional position of the living entity is to be an eternal servant of Krishna. Unquote. From the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, chapter 20, verse 108. In this world, everyone is trying to be a master. Individually and collectively, everyone is trying to assert, I am the Lord of all I survey. But this attitude is futile, because by nature, everyone is a servant. Instead of becoming a servant of Krishna, we have become the servant of our senses. In either case, we are servants. Therefore, those who are really intelligent think, if I have to work as a servant, why not be a servant of Krishna? Only the Krishna conscious devotee is sane because he accepts his natural position as a servant of Krishna. Worship of Lord Krishna or Vishnu is the actual goal of Vedic civilization. But the so-called Vedantists do not accept this. 
They divert their attention to the worship of demigods and advise that one may worship any of them. No, even demons or asuras sometimes worship demigods. Ravan was a great devotee of Lord Shiva, but he was an asura. Similarly, Hiranyakashipu was a great devotee of Lord Brahma, but he was also an asura. Anyone who is not a devotee of Lord Vishnu is an asura. That is the verdict of the Vedas. Ajamil was a Brahmin, which means that he was a servant of Narayan. In other words, he was a Vaishnav. A Vaishnav is one who recognizes that Lord Krishna is the supreme proprietor and enjoyer and that everyone else is his servant. Just as the master is the enjoyer of his entire establishment, so Krishna is the enjoyer of everything and everyone in both the material and spiritual worlds. Actually, no one else is the enjoyer. No one else is in the position to enjoy. Krishna is the only enjoyer. When we forget our relationship with Krishna as his eternal servitors, we become servants of our senses. Following the dictation of our senses, we enter into the darkest regions of illusion and are subjected to the punishment of Yamaraj. Sometimes our conscience forbids us, don't do this, but we surrender to our lust and greed and thus we do it anyway. Krishna is within our heart, also dictating, don't do it, yet still we do it. This kind of service to our senses simply brings suffering. Since we must serve, why not serve Krishna? Why should we serve our senses, which are never satisfied anyway? We should become, become servants of God. That is the perfection of life. Otherwise, we shall be obliged to become servants of our senses and suffer. One who becomes a servant of Krishna becomes a Goswami, a master of his senses. The title Goswami indicates one who refuses to follow the dictations of his senses. Instead, he follows the dictation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just as Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami did. Goswami is not a caste title. Before becoming a Goswami, Rupa Goswami served the Mohammedan government as a minister and was consequently rejected by the Hindu Brahmin society. When he gave up the dictation of Nawab Hussein Shah to follow the dictation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord made him a Goswami. All genuine Goswamis are also Vairagis, renunciants. But if one is unable to be a real Vairagi, then he must become a Grahasta or householder. It is not that one may pose himself as a Brahmachari or a Sannyasi and at the same time indulge in illicit sex secretly. That is abominable. If a genuine householder practices Karma Yoga, giving the results of his activities to Krishna, he will eventually attain the platform of perfect renunciation. He should not desire to enjoy the fruits of his activities, but should instead work as a matter of duty, thinking, Krishna wants this, Krishna will be satisfied by my doing this, and therefore I must do it. This is the right attitude for a devotee. Arjun was unwilling to fight for his personal interest, but when he understood that Krishna wanted him to fight, he took it as his duty. He thought, it must be done. It does not matter whether I like it or not. Krishna wants it, and therefore I must do it. That is the attitude of a renounced devotee of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verse 66, Lord Krishna instructs his disciple Arjun, quote, 
Just surrender unto me, and I shall protect you from all sinful reactions." Unquote. And Arjun accepts Krishna's instruction with the words, Karishye Vachanam Tava, which means, quote, I will do as you say, unquote. From the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verse 73. If we follow Arjun's example, we will be in direct contact with Krishna, and we will be able to surmount all difficulties in both our spiritual and material life. We hear the instructions of Krishna via the unbroken chain of disciplic succession or Guru Parampara. Acceptance of these instructions is called Shiksha or voluntarily following the instruction of the spiritual master. The independent nature of the living entity is that he does not want to follow the instructions of another living being, however pure. But when one voluntarily agrees to obey the orders of the spiritual master, one is following the orders of Krishna, and thus one's life becomes perfect. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 17, Verse 27, Krishna says, Acharyam mam vijaniyan navamanyeta karichit namartya budhya suyeta sarvadeva mayu guru which means, quote, One should know the Acharya as myself and never disrespect him in any way. One should not envy him, thinking him an ordinary man, for he is the representative of all the demigods. Unquote. Thinking the spiritual master an ordinary person and envying him are causes of a devotee's falling down. Devotional service requires training under the guidance of a spiritual master, and this guidance is received when one surrenders to the spiritual master inquires from him and renders service to him. But these are impossible for one who envies the spiritual master. Ajamil was trained as a Brahmin, but he lost his position as a Brahmin by associating with a prostitute, so much so that he forgot all his Brahminical activities. Nevertheless, at the end of his life, by chanting the four syllables of the holy name Narayan, he was saved from the gravest danger of falling down. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 40, Svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bayat, which means, quote, Even a little devotional service can save one from the greatest danger. Unquote. Devotional service, which begins with chanting the holy name of the Lord, is so powerful that even if a person falls down from the exalted position of a Brahmin through sexual indulgence, he can be saved from all calamities if he somehow or other chants the holy name of the Lord. This is the extraordinary power of the Lord's holy name. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is advised that one not forget the chanting of the holy name even for a moment. Satatam kirtayanto mam yatantas cha dridavrita.
There are so many dangers in this material world that one may fall down from an exalted position at any time. Yet if one keeps himself always pure and steady by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he will be safe without a doubt. Ajamil did not do this, and therefore he lost all his Brahminical qualities by the association of a prostitute. Especially mentioned here is the effect of eating food prepared by a prostitute. Food prepared by an unclean sinful woman is extremely infectious. Ajamil ate such food and therefore he became sinful. Also mentioned here is Ajamil's misuse of his inheritance. Customarily, everyone is eligible to inherit his father's property and Ajamil also inherited the money of his father. But what did he do with the money? Instead of engaging the money in the service of Krishna, he engaged it in the service of a prostitute. Therefore, he was condemned. How did this happen? He was victimized by the prostitute's dangerous, lustful glance. A chaste and faithful wife will give birth to good sons, who will then offer oblations to his forefathers and thus deliver them if by chance they have fallen into a hellish condition. The very word putra or son means one who can deliver his forefathers from hell. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed this by his example when he went to Gaya to offer oblations to his forefathers. Even today there is a Vishnu temple in Gaya where such oblations are offered at the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. There have been cases where one's father or mother took the body of a ghost at death and after oblations were offered at the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu at Gaya, the father or mother was delivered. However, anyone who becomes a Vaishnav offers oblations to Vishnu at every moment and thus his forefathers are automatically delivered. If one son in the family becomes a Vaishnav, he can deliver 14 generations of ancestors and 14 generations of yet unborn descendants. This is confirmed in the Srimad Bhagavatam. As sense control is the beginning of pious life, illicit sex is the beginning of sinful life. One should not engage in illicit sex or sex for any reason except having a child with one's wife. Marriage is meant for begetting children and in that sense it is a religious institution. Lord Krishna confirms this in the Bhagavad Gita chapter 7 verse 11 Dharma viruddho vute shu kamo smi, which means, quote, I am sex that does not contradict religious principles. Unquote. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a devotee named Shivananda Sain, who was a family man. Shivananda used to come with all the devotees every year to see Lord Chaitanya in Puri, and he came together with his wife and children. Once he came to see the Lord, and his wife offered her respects. At that time she was pregnant, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised Shivananda, this time when you get your child, you should give him the name Parmananda Das. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that pregnancy resulted from sex, but he did not condemn sex in this case, as it was conducted according to scriptural injunction. On the other hand, there is the case of Junior Haridas. He was a sannyasi, a renunciant, who was an intimate associate of the Lord. Once he merely desired sex and did not actually partake of it, and immediately Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his Paramatma feature, could understand this. The Lord then asked his other associates not to allow Junior Haridas to come before him any more. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Ramananda Rai, and other intimate associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested, Junya Haridas is your eternal servant. 
Somehow or other, he has committed this offense, but kindly excuse him. Still, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was firm in this respect and immediately replied, If you like Junior Haridas so much, better you remain with him and I will go away. From that moment, nobody ventured again to request Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to excuse Junior Haridas. When Junior Haridas became hopeless in his efforts to be excused by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to Prayag and drowned himself in the confluence of the rivers Yamuna and Ganges. Although Lord Chaitanya knew about this incident, after some time he inquired of his associates, Where is Junior Haridas now? They replied, Sir, you did not accept him, and so he has committed suicide. Lord Chaitanya said, Yes, very good. This is very good. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sometimes harder than stone and sometimes softer than a flower. That is the behavior of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Shivananda was a bona fide grahasta, obeying the rules and regulations of householder life, whereas Junya Haridas merely desired sex, but because he was in the renounced order of life, he was condemned. A sannyasi gives up his family and takes a vow to abstain from sex, but if he again takes to sex, he commits a very great sin. So Ajamil was victimized by illicit sex with a prostitute. There are many instances throughout the world in which even a purified person falls victim to the attraction by a prostitute and spends all his money on her. Prostitute hunting is so abominable that sex with a prostitute can ruin one's character, destroy one's exalted position, and plunder all one's money. Therefore, illicit sex is strictly prohibited. One should be satisfied with his married wife, for even a slight deviation will create havoc. A Krishna conscious grahasta should always remember this. He should always be satisfied with one wife and be peaceful simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Otherwise, at any moment, he may fall down from his good position, as exemplified by the case of a Jamil. Considering the abominable character of a Jamil, the Yamadudas were perplexed as to why the Vishnu Dudas had forbidden them to take such a man to Yamaraj for punishment. Since a Jamil had not undergone atonement for his sinful acts, the Yamadudas thought he should be taken to Yamaraj to be purified. Punishment by Yamaraj is a process of purification for the most abominable sinful persons. Therefore, the Yamadudas requested the Vishnu Dudas not to obstruct their taking a Jamil to Yamaraj.